Hello everyone, welcome to Watercolor Wednesday. This is Kendra Krebs and I'm filling in for Bonnie Krebs as the Art Impressions guest artist for the week. And I just wanted to do a fun little project for you guys. And um, primarily I wanted to show you foreground and background. Um, at the shows I get a lot of requests for showing the trees in the background. So I thought that I would use this opportunity and make a video for you. So for this one, I used the following sets the little wagon mini set or the garden wagon and I'm going to use this little flower here. In the foliage set two I am going to use the little vine, this one. Flower set two I'm going to use these flowers right here and then maybe some of these too. I might add those in. And then I'm going to use these two grasses. This pot from the ornate set, ornate container set, and the grove from the covered bridge set, and then of course my little kitty from the watercolor cat set. So let's get started. We'll move this one, and I am going to start with my ornate pot, and I'm gonna use number 86 African Violet to color this. Now we're using water-based markers, for those of you who are new here, this is a stamping technique that we use water-based markers, watercolor paper, a brush, and a palette, and then of course the Art Impressions stamps. These stamps are amazing for this. We pioneered this 20 years ago, many of you know that, um, which makes our stamps absolutely superior for this project. So I'm going to stamp that down sort of lower center to make room for my trees. I'm going to grab my water and just slightly pull off the excess and start pulling the color out of the lines. And I don't need to be extra careful, I just want to be sure I'm leaving enough space in the center for a highlight. So go ahead and continue pulling these out. Now remember, we want to stay in sections. So it doesn't matter what section you start in. So for example, this up here is a section Right below it is a section, below that's a section, and here is a section. So we want to stay within the sections. We don't want to drag our brush um, through all of the lines because a straight stroke through lines is actually going to act as an eraser, and we don't want to erase our lines. We just want to pull the color out of the lines, making sure to leave our highlight. All right, so I'm going to come down here and put these lines in, and this is going to look like a shadow underneath that. So keep pulling it out till you're satisfied. I don't spend a whole lot of time on this, and you'll notice I did leave a corner open because I want to put some grass and foliage and flowers and all of that good stuff in here. So it's up to you if you wanna do this or not. I just sort of like to think ahead and think, well, I'd rather leave the corner off and not have a line through my grass, but, but a line through your grass doesn't mean it's bad, it's just a preference. So I'm going to grab the jumbo grass here and just put my grass into the base before I add my cat into the top. So we will stamp this in a sequence of at least five or more to give us multi-dimensional looks with our foliage and flowers. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Put that grass in there and I'm gonna start pulling the grass out of the lines. Got a little fuzz there, get that out of the way. And I just pulled this right through my pot. I think it makes a really nice shadow effect by doing that, so that's up to you. Again, that's a preference thing. And I can go the opposite way. I don't have to just go in the direction that the grass is pointing. I can go this way too, that's okay. Um, my brush decides and I decide <laughs> if it goes that way or not. So we don't have to stay in the confines of the stamp. I mean, you can see how far out I'm pulling this. Why not go in the opposite direction too? So it's really up to you if you wanna do that. Next, I'm gonna take my 
little masking paper and I'm going to put this at the mouth of the ornate pot. And I'm going to take my little kitty. This one's kind of soaking in the sun. He's sort of looking up at the sky. And I'm going to use my sepia. You can use any brown for this. I'm not going to ink his backside because I want to put flowers and foliage in there as well. So it's up to you whether you want to ink that. And I'll stamp him in. And he's floating a little bit, but that's okay because I can just put grass under there. And actually, this is a really great example because a lot of you from classes or, or you know things I've seen, you've been concerned that your little animal is floating. So this is a great opportunity to show you how to make him not look like he's floating, <laughs> make him look more grounded. So I'm going to take my teeny tiny grass and I'm just going to ink that with the number 15 olive green. And I'm just going to put some grass right below him under his feet and under his little booty. And that's just going to blend him right in. And once you get your foliage and flowers in there, you're not even going to notice that. So really, I'm not concerned at all about him looking like he's not grounded. Especially once I get all of my flowers and all my vines and the greenery and those colors because people are going to be looking at that. They're not going to be seeing that his feet might be a little bit higher than the pot. So you can see that already looks better by adding some grass. So let's go ahead and pull some color out of our cat's lines. Make sure you are leaving the top of his face highlighted because he's kind of soaking in the sun. So keep that white and then you can pull color into the rest of his body, also his backside, his little back would be left light, highlighted. And I'm just going to very lightly pull the color out. It doesn't need to be much because I'm going to come back in and put little stripes. So really I'm just kind of adding a little background for those stripes to make him a tabby. So let's put in our flowers really fast. These are super quick. I'm going to do these little dots from the garden wagon set and I'm going to use an orange. So go ahead and ink that and you can just put this wherever you want to, wherever you feel like you want flowers, put those in. And I do these in clusters just like our basics. So sequence of five or more. If you can get more, do more because you're just going to get more light variation. It's going to kind of haze into the background, which I think is really, really pretty. So that's up to you and what you want to see in your garden. I bring this kind of forward a little bit. Maybe some more here. And then I'm going to, before I add my water, I'm actually going to put in another flower and that's the little poppy looking ones from that uh, flower set too. I am totally in love with that set. I think it's just beautiful. And I'm going to come in and just put some of this persimmon. So this is 89 persimmon onto my little flowers. And you can see I'm not inking the grass. That's the beauty of these stamps. You can use what you want. You don't have to use the entire stamp to get a really beautiful image. Put a few more in there and then we'll add our water again. And remember, we want to dab. Anything that does not have an obvious straight line, we want to dab. So I'm going to start with my lighter orange color. And I'm going to dab that and you'll see that this orange and red is going to blend a little bit and it's just divine looking. It's so beautiful and super summery, which I love. So I'm just going to come in. Remember your hand is resting on the table, which means you're dabbing and not poking. We don't want to poke because there are two reasons. First, it hurts our bristles. And secondly, we're not transferring enough water to our image and it's not really moving the color around enough. So we do want to dab using the side of the brush. 
and I'm really pulling that red out, right? Really pulling that out from the lines. So now we, that we have our flowers in, I am going to put our background tree little grove in, okay? So I'm going to once again mask, make sure this is semi-dry here. I'm gonna mask these flowers and some of my cat. It doesn't have to be perfect because those trees are really gonna kinda come out. So even if you have a little bit of a white space between the trees and your flowers, that's okay. We actually invite white because it adds more dimension. So the tops of the trees are going to be number 15 olive green, and the bases are going to be our sepia. So I'm going to just stamp this right behind the little kitty, and I can pull that up, and you can see now I've got a really nice background grove of trees. So now before I add any water to this, I'm going to take that little vine from uh, foliage set two, and I'm going to use these as my leaves. So I'm going to stamp these all around, all around wherever you want to. And I'm gonna bring them past their branches because that also makes them look like they're closer to you. If you, keep the leaves inside of the branches, like really close, it actually looks further away. And if you use the really tiny little hearts from the um, the covered bridge set, the same set as the trees, let me show you these ones, you can use these as leaves and they'll look really far away. So it's up to you if you wanna do that. But I'm just gonna continue taking these little vines and creating the treetops. And I'm just, I'm reorienting the stamp so that it's moving all around. So I'm not staying the same way every time I stamp. I, I am constantly moving it so that it looks like the leaves are sort of fluttering out from all angles. And I'm just gonna continue going. You can do yours as full or as sparse as you want to. If this was a fall scene, you could do these in yellows and reds and oranges. It would just be gorgeous. So you get to decide all of that. We've done the hard work for you by doing the stamps and making sure the perspective is right for you. So now I'm gonna take my brush again and I'm going to start dabbing. We want to leave the white space so make sure you do that. And you're just sort of arbitrarily stamping around the shape of the treetops. You don't need to touch every single leaf. So you just kinda wanna stamp around, or not stamp around, dab around, excuse me, dab all around. Stamp too, but first, first dab before you stamp again. <laughs> So keep going. Now my treetops are finished and I want my trees to look like birch trees. So I really want these, these trunks to pop forward in white. So I'm going to actually pull the color out outside of the trees and they'll pop forward looking white. So I'll keep this color on the outside just like that and you can see since I didn't bring them inside the trunks, the darker background pops them forward. So I can do that as much or as little as I want to. And now I'm gonna put my teeny tiny grass in the background. Isn't that great? You've got a jumbo grass for your foreground in that first foliage set, and then you've got a tiny grass for your background. So it just takes the work out of trying to figure out what grass do I use where? Can I use a bigger grass in both? And really you wanna stick with the smaller items in the background. So the teeny tiny flowers or the teeny tiny grass, those are, those are useful for the background and then use the bigger flowers and the bigger grass for the foreground, the things that are closer to you. So I'm gonna put some of this grass 
back in here. And then I'm going to take my brush and just kind of pull these out, this grass out a little bit. Same thing here. And if I want to add a little bit something else in there just so it's not so sparse, I can take that same vine and maybe I just want to put a few of these just kind of around just to kind of give us a little something else in here. It's up to you how you want to do this. But you can always come in later and say, oh, I think actually a vine would look really good in here. Well, do it. Do it and see how it looks. I bet you'll love it. Got a couple there. And we will dab. See how that kind of filled in that space? So I can pull these out. And then I want to add a little bit of detail into my kitty and a little bit of grounding in the foreground and background. And then maybe I'll put some taller flowers in here. I think that would actually be super pretty. So let's take our sepia because I want to put my grounding in. So I'm going to color that onto my palette. Grab that sepia. And I'm just going to start small and get bigger and get small again. So just a little bit. And then I'll do the same thing over here and just kind of, do you see how both of these sides kind of come to a point? I do that because we know that there's more seen that we're not seeing, but we want to focus our attention here. So the points kind of say, okay, I know there's more over here, but this is where I want you to look. So we're going to do it again, sort of in this area underneath our kitty. And I can always grab a little bit more water if I feel like it's not just smoothly brushing onto the paper. Grab a little bit more water, start small and get bigger, and then get small again. I kind of call this my little tornado. So if you sort of imagine a tornado, it's small and then it gets bigger and then it gets small again and it's got a little tail. So that's sometimes what I think about when I'm adding the ground in. So now let's add in those taller flowers. Let's do these in like a nice purple. I'm using number eight violet for these. And I'll use 15 olive green. So maybe we'll put some little flowers in here. How cute are those? I absolutely love those flowers. Those are also in flower set two, the new one. So if you don't have that one, we will link it below or link it in a little pop-up link and you can go get that for yourself. I honestly recommend it. It's one of those sets that you will not regret buying. You will absolutely love it. So we'll put these little flowers in. And then let's add a little bit of this sepia to our kitty. And we'll just do his little stripes here. And I kind of imagine a, a spot in the middle and I keep the stripe sort of coming towards that spot. So I'll have a few little stripes here and then maybe some stripes here. And maybe he's got like a little one on his forehead too. The, the nice thing about cats is they're all kind of different. They've got different coloring and different coats, different looks. So even if it's not like what you would think as perfect, it doesn't matter because that's what this kitty looks like. So I'm going to take my sepia, my detailed tip, color in his ear, make sure his little nose and his eyes nice and dark. That just brings him to life. Don't forget to 
always darken the eyes of your animals. It will absolutely bring them to life. So now let's do our sky. I'm gonna use 17 steel blue. 17 steel blue. I'm going to wet my paper just right above my kitty and my flowers right next to the trees without touching them. Just gonna get that a little bit wet and then we'll pick up our blue and we're gonna just start dabbing in the blue. And then I'm just going to take water alone and dab those edges. So it just kind of fades into itself. If you're doing your sky with straight lines like this, what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna go all the way to the edge because your lines are gonna have edges of their own and that's gonna bug you. So then you're gonna to try to soften those edges, well then the blue's gonna go further. And then you're gonna to try to soften those edges and the blue's gonna go further. So you're gonna end up having a full, fully blue sky and then you're gonna feel like, oh I need to put stuff over here and more stuff over here. But if you keep it really simple and just dab, it becomes sort of a suggestion of a sky and you don't have to do so much, but you get a really big impact for having it there. So that's just a thought. Dab in your sky. And then while we're waiting for our kitty to dry so I can put in his little whiskers, I'm gonna take number 86 African Violet, and I do these a lot. I love these little dots. So I do these dots quite often because I think they're so cute. I had somebody at one of the shows I was demoing at tell me, oh, those little dots are the allergies. <laughs> so like the pollen that we breathe in. And I thought that was a pretty good idea. So I'm just gonna move around. Put these little dots in wherever you want to. This again is your garden. You get to decide where your dots go. And I will put my whiskers on my kitty. Remember whiskers don't come from the nose. They come from the little cheekies. So we'll put those on our kitty. And then we sign our work, right? Always, always, always. Sign and date. So that is our project for today. I hope that you enjoyed it and thank you so much for tuning in and having me as your guest artist this week. I hope you have a great week and enjoy this project. Bye-bye.